Hey guys, welcome to Jeep Jeep TV. Today we're talking about my bung hole. All right. Hey guys, my name is Liam here at Jeep Sheep TV, and today we're talking about. But, well, I guess a bunghole, but more importantly, we're talking about a wideband O2 sensor. Yes. So, wideband O2 sensor came with an extra bunghole for your exhaust header or pipe or whatever you're running, right? And that is for the O2 sensor. Well, okay, so your Jeep probably already has an O2 sensor in it if it's fuel injected. Why would you want a second one? Well, I'm going to be doing some goofy stuff in the next couple of videos, and so I'm going to be kind of messing with my current O2 sensor, and therefore I'm going to run my wideband separate. Now, technically, you can use your wideband to feed data to your ECU or PCM or whatever acronym you want for the engine computer, and... It works somewhat okay from what I've read on forums. I did not want to take the chances, and so now I have two bung holes. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's something I'll tell people at parties. Anyway, the important thing is that we're installing this wideband O2 sensor, well, sensor which comes with the display. It's going to tell me the air to fuel ratio of what's coming out of my engine. So as it's burning, well, the mixture of air and fuel, this is gonna tell me how that ratio is, how close I am to stoichiometric, which is just the ideal amount, the ideal ratio chemically. And then I can continue trying to tune my engine with the Power Commander 3. If you haven't seen videos on what the Power Commander 3 is, you can find them somewhere. The link's definitely in the description. This install is going to be relatively easy. It does involve welding a bung hole or repurposing your existing one and then the rest is purely just wiring. Getting the signal to this display. Now I like I said I'm not doing the version where I'm using this O2 sensor to feed my engine's computer data so if that's something you're looking to do this video is not going to help you. This is adding an additional O2 sensor so you can read your air fuel ratio in a very accurate way. Look at me. I so cool. Now if you want to watch the how-to video of installing this exhaust header or learn more about it, I've got a video dedicated to this exhaust header and it's, you know, I'll put the thumbnail somewhere in the link down below yet again. Now, when I did this last, I had a lot of trouble with this gasket staying lined up as I assembled the whole thing. And the reason being is I've got a post here and I think I'm supposed to have one back there, but I don't. And so you can line the gasket up on that. I'm running two gaskets and I explained that in the other video. It has to do with this aftermarket header. Um, but I, I still don't have a post back there. So what I'm doing, and maybe this will help you in the future, is I'm just sticking a screwdriver in through here while I get everything lined up and I get the first uh, ends bolted up. This is going to keep my gasket up in place and not falling on the ground and I'm not trying to finagle it into place, you know, way back here where it's hard to reach. Hey, Torque Specs, what's that? 23, whoa, 23 foot-pounds is what the manual recommends for the bolts to put the exhaust header on here. Now, you'll also notice that the intake manifold's gone. we got to put that on as well, and that is also 23 foot-pounds. Under the Jeep. So you're going to have some kind of bracket like this. I didn't show you me installing it because it's boring. But there, that's the new O2 sensor. And if you have an automatic transmission, you probably have to worry about this bracket here. And I measured my hole location. I was off by like one degree. I was trying to kick it out over here. And so, yeah, it touches there, but I, I went in, kind of zip tied it. It's managed. It'll be okay. It's just not ideal. And so then you're going to take 
For example, this is the original O2 sensor, the factory one, and both O2 sensors go in the same way. <laughs> you screw them in like anything else, and then you put a wrench on them and you tighten them down real good. Kind of hard to get a torque spec on these because it's uh, hard to get a socket on these. You, they make them, but in this area, it just just wrench it on pretty good. That's all I can tell you. Okay, looking down from the top of this mess, we're gonna look at the wires here. So this wrap is from the O2 sensor and we're gonna take a little journey. So this guy here, transmission shift linkage. That guy, right at the end of my finger, right there, there's your connector to your O2 sensor. So the O2 sensor, if you remember, this is the bracket we saw down below. The O2 sensor is down there, and then you're just going to connect this connector here. It's multiple pins, nice waterproof connector. This is going to come up here. I'm going to manage your wire somehow. They give you a lot, so, you know, keep that in mind. And then it's going to go here, through the firewall, where we're going to meet up with it on the other side. So there's your O2 sensor. I made a little thing out of sheet metal for it. I just bent it by hand. So in the back of this, and I, I, I can't get it out without really messing stuff up here, but in the back of this, there's just this little connector that goes in the back of the display. And then you've got wires that go through the rat's nest down here, and everyone's got one, right? Isn't that great? But it ends up coming over to here, right there, right there. And what that's doing is it's connecting to a circuit I have for some of these little outlets right here. Oops. Which is really not significant to you at all, except for the fact that... See how it's, it's not on with ignition, or it's not on in auxiliary? But it is on with ignition. So... Now, the sensor display is on with, with ignition, start, run. Additionally, ground wire I have coming up here, which is just a spot in the dashboard that seems to work well for ground. As you can see, I've used it for a lot of things. I'm not going to claim that really any of this wiring is something you should replicate. Some of it's good, some of it is very not good. But it's that simple. You run power and ground to that guy, and then you run it through your firewall and down, and then you eventually connect it to that. Let's talk about operation. The O2 sensor is going to tell you your air fuel ratio and stoichiometric is 14.7 to 1. I know that in my Jeep, it's really common to have 14.7 or something really close to that, kind of anything under like 40 miles an hour. I don't know if that's necessarily accurate. One of the things that I ran into a lot with this is problems with trusting it. So if I had my power commander tuned to be way too rich, I would actually end up getting a way too lean reading, which you'll see here. I can't explain why. Some of it could be the piggyback nature of the power commander and the ECU is just overcorrecting and it's leaning out, but I don't think that's actually accurate because I'd have that happen to me while on the highway going 70 miles an hour, and I don't think that the engine could maintain 70 miles an hour if it had an air fuel ratio above like 18. So, take that as you will. I was able to solve that by leaning out the mixture. Now what you're going to see here is some more normal operation. I'm around that 14 because I'm cruising, and then I press on the accelerator, and I'm up closer to 13, which is a little bit more rich, so that way I can accelerate. This is normal. This is normal for the engine to compensate, to give you a little bit more fuel for acceleration. And then as I let off, you can see that it's dipping down into the 15 and 16. Now, 15 and 16, supposedly you can run down the road at that, but I would consider that to be kind of lean. 
why it's doing this is because when you're letting off the throttle, you don't need that fuel. In fact, you want to slow down, so it's just going to start cutting fuel. That's totally normal. In fact, I would think that's good because it's going to help your fuel economy. You're not dumping fuel in when you don't need it. Now you'll also see here that I am going up to numbers like 12. Well, some of that could be that acceleration. That is normal. Some of that could also be what I'm doing with the power commander. Because I have a supercharger, and if I haven't teased that before, and you haven't watched that video series, definitely go and watch that video series where I supercharge the Jeep for under $1,000. Because I have a supercharger, what you're going to want to do is increase the air fuel mixture, especially when you're accelerating. Right now, the supercharger is turned on, and as I'm accelerating, it's going up into 12 to 1. You can go 10 to 1, uh, maybe even 9 to 1, depending on what your boost pressures are, but I'm below 3 PSI most of the time, so really I don't need to be going too much more rich than you would in a normal engine, hard acceleration being roughly 12 to 1. Another thing I've used the O2 sensor for that's really helped me a lot is to manage my fuel economy. So if you've done modifications to the Jeep, you've done a throttle body, maybe you've done injectors, or you moved the air inlet temperature sensor, all things that I talk about on this channel, what that's doing is it's going to start offsetting some of the internal maps in the, in the PCM or the ECU, depending on what you call it. Sometimes that will take certain ranges and make them not what they're supposed to be. And I don't actually know if they're actually bad from the beginning or if it's due to the modifications that I've made. But what I've noticed is at high RPM, higher RPM anyway, you're at you know, 3,000, 3,500, you're rolling down the highway at say 70 miles an hour, 75 miles an hour, and you go to accelerate. Now you're gonna have to put in a lot of throttle position with the four cylinder Wrangler. And when you do that, sometimes it feels like it starts to slow down rather than accelerate. With the O2 sensor, you can see that it's trying to add a lot of fuel to help you accelerate, but it's overcompensating. It's showing me an air fuel ratio of 11, 10, or 9, which I would consider to be way too rich, and is probably the reason why you're starting to slow down. With the O2 sensor, you're able to visually see when you're entering into these ranges, and you can see where these ranges are. I also had a range where I was really lean at like 2,000 RPM. And so you can use this to train your foot to avoid these ranges to maximize your fuel economy and performance. But additionally, you can use tools like the Power Commander to correct some of these issues that you're having. So if you have various modifications that have helped the Jeep but are now causing issues in certain ranges of operation, you can now correct those with the Power Commander because you now know where they are. As far as troubleshooting goes, I'm not going to claim to be an expert because I haven't had a lot of issues or error codes come through on this, therefore I've never had to troubleshoot it. But I will tell you that the sensor itself, they do go bad, and you can make them go bad if you run your mixture too rich or too lean or really too anything, like any component, they do wear out. So just keep in mind that it can go bad. You could have a dud and just read online, test it with multimeter, figure it out. And it's going to be great. I highly encourage this modification. It's a great way to learn about the fuel injection system in your Jeep, or if you have a carbureted vehicle, it's a great way to learn about that and ways to optimize if you can. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like, please share, and of course, subscribe.